Okay, um, here we are in our advanced carousel.js file. So this is where we're going to be doing all the JavaScript plugin work. So guys, I'm sure this is what you all been waiting for. Um, as much as CSS coding is cool, it's never as cool as JavaScript coding. I'm sure you all agree with me. Okay, so we'll just start by um, writing our plugin's name. So as usual, we just start with a self-invoking function. So we say function and then We'll just self invoke it as usual and then pass it the jQuery namespace. And then the dollar sign accept as a parameter over here. Okay, so our, our plugin name will be um, advanced carousel. So we'll have dollar sign dot fn dot advanced carousel equals to function. So if you remember from my other videos, every plugin that we make, I mean, it's not a convention to do this, but it's actually a good idea to be to enable users to pass in their own parameters as options. For example, if they want to override what your plugin is doing. So I advise anytime you're writing a plugin, just try to do that. It's good practice, you know, unless you have a really good reason not to. Okay. All right. So we'll name that settings. That's whatever the user passes in that will override our default settings. So we'll just store our so we'll just store our element selected element inside of a variable. So we'll just cache it and call it um, this. So this equals to this. All right. Basically, what we're doing here we're caching this because we're going to be using it twice. So anytime that you're using a variable more than once, it's good practice to cache it. You know, because you don't want jQuery to be going down. And searching for that element again all right so so we'll return that element which is um which we've cached above and the reason for that is so that we'll maintain jQuery's um, chainability so whenever we return this anytime our function our plugin name has been called we can say for example stuff like um, dollar sign selector dot something dot advanced carousel and then we just pass in some options over here so if we return this we can continue using our plugin and say dot and then do some jquery other function but if we don't return this we can't do anything like that okay so that's um, verified so now we just write a function which our plugin will call so before we go ahead I just want to remind you of one thing since I did mention stuff about passing settings over here we'll just go ahead and list all the settings that our plugin will be able to accept that will override the defaults that we have inside of our plugin okay so here we are in custom.js so inside of custom.js is where we're going to call our plugin and as usual, that will also be in a self-invoking function. But there will be one subtle difference between this one and our plugin file. Our plugin file didn't have a document.ready. But this one will wrap it inside of a document.ready. Because we don't want it to start querying the DOM before our document is ready. Okay. So we'll pass the jQuery namespace as well inside here. And the dollar sign as well. So when the document is ready, we want to use our plugin. So we'll target So we'll So we'll target this carousel outer element here and then call our plugin function onto that. Back in custom.css, we're going to target our carousel outer and it has a class of carousel outer, so we'll just type that out. And then we say dot advanced. Let's just see what that is called carousel outer. So we'll just copy that back in our custom.js. We'll just paste it here. Okay. So now we've got to the part where we want we're calling our function. And now we're going to pass in options, which will override the defaults. So the options that we will be able to pass are first of all, wait time. Wait time. And that is how long our jQuery slider will wait before auto-scrolling to 
The wait time is how long the jQuery plugin will wait before auto scrolling itself to the next set of um now the wait time is how long the jQuery plugin will wait before scrolling to the next item in the list of items. For example, if it's on one image, before it goes to the next image, this is how long it's going to wait. So for starters, we'll give that an initial value of 2000 milliseconds. So that's like two seconds. Okay, so the next option we'll be able to pass is carousel inner. Remember guys, Carousel Inner is the second element inside of Carousel Outer. It's like inside of Carousel Outer, just one level down, we have Carousel Inner. So the reason we're passing this, guys, is so that none of these CSS elements will be set inside of our JavaScript. We want to have total control over what elements are being set so that we can style them. So behavior-wise, the JavaScript will take care of that, but as to how it looks, the aesthetics of our plugin, we want to have total control over that inside of our CSS file.